Today I'm going to teach you how to turn your photos into SVG cut files in Inkscape to use in Silhouette Studio. Today I have one photograph in two file formats. This is a picture of my nephew Preston. The top file is in JPEG format, which means the background has not been removed. In the bottom photo is the same photograph, except I have cleanly removed the background in Photoshop and saved as a PNG. If you are interested in learning how to cleanly remove backgrounds from a photograph or graphic in Photoshop, leave me a comment below and I'll be glad to make a tutorial on that. The reason why I'm doing two different file formats is because some people like the look of a complete photograph or graphic and not leaving anything out of it. And some people like just to use part of a photograph for a cut file that they need for a project. So this was a great way to do that. So let's start with a JPEG format and we're going to select the top photograph. When I say select, that means click on the photograph or graphic and you will see black arrows all around the image. That means it is selected. Go to the top and select path. Go to trace bitmap and then this box will appear. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, we're only going to trace and graze, which is going to be black, white, and grays. We're going to uncheck smooth, make sure stack scans is checked, remove background is checked. This is a totally different than removing the background as it is in a PNG file. Over in the top part of the section that we're working in, in the trace bitmap box, it'll say scans with a number in it. I want about five scans. And then over in the gray box, I want to see live preview. I want to make sure that that is checked as well. And then I'm going to press OK. If you look at your original image, once it is done processing, once it is done processing, you will see your trace on top of your original image. You can close out of your trace bitmap box and drag the scans away from the original. While it is still selected, remember when I say selected, you still have the black arrows around your image. Go down to your colors and select black. Now go back up to the, to the image and double click. This ungroups all of these scans where you can pull them apart. And now we're going to start dragging them apart and selecting the ones we want to keep and the ones that we do not want to keep. So just start moving them away from each other, separating them so you can see what you're working with. Okay, I chose five scans as you remember. And when I chose five scans, it includes the original. So if I chose five scans, it actually means I get four because it includes the original. Okay, now looking at these four, traces. I want to determine which ones that I would not consider in the running as a trace. The one in the top right corner, there's not enough detail, so I'll select it and delete. The one in the top left corner, it's too dark, there's not enough showing, so I want to select it and delete. These are the two that are left in the running. Now these I would be happy with either one of these to save as SVG and use as a cut file. As you can see, I have a large gap here and then I have an open space here. And then on this one, I just have an open space. These are easy, easily fixable and all we have to do is node edit. But first I need to decide which one that I want to keep. Now there are great aspects to each one. Each one has a little more or maybe a little bit less detail than the other. You can use either one by themselves or what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of them. Let me just say, if you are only going to select one, which like I said, I would select either one and be happy with that, you would close off this gap and I'll show you that in a moment. And then you would go down, you would go to save as, and you would want to make sure that you saved as a plain SVG, not Inkscape SVG, but a plain SVG and save it where you need it. Pull it into Silhouette Studio and you'll automatically have your cut lines and you can cut from vinyl 
HDB, whatever you're working with. Okay, so now let's go back. I'm going to stack these two on top of one another. So I'm going to highlight both of them, which I have. Now I'm going to go to Object. I'm going to go down to Align and Distribute. Now I'm going to choose Align Bottom Edges. And then I'm going to choose Center on Vertical Axis. This puts them right on top of each other, exactly where they need to be. What little bit of detail that one had that the other didn't, they both have together. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that they're grouped together. So now I'm going to choose Path, and I'm going to choose Union, which is going to make them as one. Now you see this gap here? And what I want to do first is I want to zoom in to the place that I'm wanting to fix. Now I want to click Edit Pass by Nodes, or you can double click on the image and the nodes come up. Now I'm going to drag the nodes to the square. I want to get them as close to the edge as possible. Without leaving any gaps. And you can always click off of it. And it doesn't have to be mighty perfect. That gap is closed. And now we have an SVG cut file. So now that I'm happy with that, what I would do is I would make sure that it's selected. I would go to File. I would go to Save As. I would go to Plain SVG. I would go where I wanted to save it and save it. And then I can pull that straight into Silhouette Studio and it's ready to cut. So now we're going to do our PNG, select the PNG file, go to Path, go to Trace Bitmap. We already have our settings that we used last time, Graze, Smooth Unchecked, Stack His Scans checked, Remove Background checked, which we have no background, Live Preview checked, Scans were at, was at 5. And then we're going to press OK. Exit out of the trace bitmap, go to black, pull away from the original, double check, and start pulling away. All right, remember we chose five scans. We only end up with four because it counts the original. OK, so now we want to delete away what we know we're not going to use. We always obviously know that the one that is selected, we're not going to use because it's there's nothing to it. Delete it. I know I'm not going to use the middle because there's just not enough to it. So we're going to delete it. Now, again with this one, either one of the two. Let me get rid of this box here so we can see better without the line. Now, if you're in Inkscape and you want to get rid of this box that automatically comes up, just a little quick tip, go to File, Document Properties, go down where it says Border. You can uncheck Show Border, close it out, and it's gone. Okay, back to what we were working on. Okay, so either one of these I would be happy with, either one. So you just kind of have to pick. It is a personal preference. Which one you would want. I'm going to save this one. This one I'm going to do away with. So I'm going to save that one. And I'm just going to put SVG pressed in so that way I know which one. Now we'll say not all photographs that you have 
will Inkscape be the answer for Tracy? In some instances, Silhouette Studio does a better job in tracing using your high pass for one part of tracing plus low pass and putting them together. Sometimes high pass, only a high pass tracing or a low pass tracing does better Silhouette Studio than Inkscape could do. Sometimes Inkscape does better than Silhouette Studio. It really depends on the image. There are several online things. I know some people use uh, Pix, uh, Pix to SVG. There's a couple of them. I don't remember off the top of my head. Different websites that you can convert images or get traces or things like that, that people pull into studio and then trace from there. I've been asked how I get most of my traced images from uh, memorial decals and memorial tiles and things like that. So that's what I wanted to show y'all. It seems like it. there's a lot of steps to it, but it's really not. It's really simple. You can also do it in color. You can do them with coloring book pages. You can do them with coloring graphics, um, graphics that are already colored, images that are, I mean, photographs that are already colored. It just really depends, and it's something that you have to pull into Inkscape and kind of try it out and see if it it works. It's it's not something that you can look at the photograph and say, "Oh, Inkscape can do that." You it's really you're going to have to test it and see. That's about the only way that you're going to be able to tell. Okay, so let's go into Studio and let me show you what I did. All right, so what I did, this one, is I kind of took the eraser tool, cleaned some of this up right here. This, some of this little, little stuff right in here. And then I picked up on it. Chose chunk five ex and just wrote his name like this and cut it out and I'm giving it to his mama for a gift and then with this one which I could have done this one as well which if I would have done this one what I would have done was wrote his name the same And either way that I would have went, as far as the gift for her, would have been perfect. With the same image, the same concept, but it's completely different. And you win either way. So I hope that helps you. And if there's any other questions that I can help you with, I hope this tutorial wasn't too complicated and that I didn't complicate things more for you. I hope that you were able to learn how to trace photographs in Inkscape. If you don't have Inkscape and you would like to download it, be sure to download it from a safe place. The actual website to download will be in the description box below. Be sure that you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you know when I upload more tutorials for you. And like I said before, any tutorials that you would like to see or comments, questions, be sure to leave a comment below and 
come on over to our Facebook page and we'd like to get more interactive over there and we'd like to see your projects and hope to see you next time. Hope you have a great day. See you again soon. Bye-bye.